happy for this first independent anniversary St. Lucia and welcome to the National Television Network live broadcast of our military parade brought to you from the VGT, also known as the SAG in Castries. I'm Prime Hutchinson and I'm joined by Norbert Williams, attaché to the Prime Minister, who will share his expertise, particularly on the parade, having served the Royal Commission. And the chairperson of the Independent Committee, Senate uh, President uh, Mrs. Janine Girodi McIntyre, again with her team, has put on an impressive program, starting with the Independent Gospel Concert, the Mr. and Mrs. Independent Pageant, and the Legacy Calypso Show, Best of St. Lucia Concert, to name just a few. Welcome, Robert. How do you see the celebration this year? Well, thank you very much, Primus. Now is the time. Let's do this together. The theme of this year's 41st anniversary of the independence and it's actually quite apt. Now is the time and the parade has just started behind us and as you can hear the orders being shouted out to the different platoons to get themselves lined up, uh, right dressed, as many of you have heard before. Um, this year we have uh, a little surprise, well not quite because they've been in the news, but we have a contingent of St. Lucians who are active members of the British Army, 21 of them who've come down to celebrate with us, and they're on parade today. We're at the Saab Claim Field, as Primus uh, indicated earlier, VG Field, as many of you know it. And today, right now, the temperature in Castries and at the VG Field is 75 degrees, going up to a high of 84. A few clouds in the sky, and it's a perfect day for a parade. I'm not even sweating yet, and Primus looks as cool as a cucumber. It appears to be a, a cool breeze blowing and uh, let's, let's hope that it, it, it remains this way on for, the, for the remaining of the, the ceremony here. Well, let's hope so. I, I think it will. Yeah. But just to, keep you, uh, just to keep you informed a bit on what's happening here, we have a uh, number of platoons here, two male platoons from the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. We have the uh, female police officers, women police officers. We have the Special Services Unit. We have the Marine Police Unit. We have the reserves, the fire service, the cadet corps. We have the uh, St. Lucia Fire Brigade, fire service. We have the St. Lucian British servicemen who are down here to celebrate with us. St. John's Ambulance, EMS personnel. We have uh, the Girl Guides. And um, that's about it with the volunteer organizations. Uh, Primus, anything you want to say? Um, perhaps we, we uh, in a while, we await the arrival of the Governor General and the, and the Prime Minister who will uh, take on the, the military parade as is customary every year. That's correct. Um, that should happen momentarily as we await the continues. Um, no, but you, you are the expert here as far as the parade. What, what are they supposed to be? What is supposed to be happening? Today, well, the general, the, the, the general order of things is that the parade marches onto the parade square about 15 minutes, or depending on what the agenda is for that day, but usually 15 minutes before the arrival of the Governor General and the Prime Minister. Um, the parade out of the parade uh, square, as it's referred to, or the field here, and um, we have a color party, and the color party. Um, are the flag bearers for a number of the contingents here today. Perhaps what we should do now is to allow the viewers to take in the, uh, the action of course. And we have the parade now at present arms and we have the color party who are now going to march out to their position on the parade square
Okay, welcome back here to the sub, folks. Uh, we've been letting you see here the actions as they unfold here in real time. We've just noticed the arrival of Acting Commissioner of Police, Milton Daisy, and he's now walked over to take the salute from the parade commander. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, no, but um, one observation is that um, the the ceremony now is, is the 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 commands are amplified. You can actually hear clearly um, that microphones are attached to the, the to the commander and or the commanders um, of the various um, platoons and so on, giving the commands and that. So it can be heard quite clearly now, um, as opposed to well, that before. is well, 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 that is uh, a change that began um, last year, or maybe once or twice before, because. Uh, the thinking was to get the audience or the, the viewers outside of St. Lucia and in St. Lucia as well and the persons here attending the parade to be able to hear the commands more clearly and be a bit more involved and informed about what was going on. And uh, may I add that uh, the public is always fascinated by this pomp and ceremony. You know, people are curious and they, they love a parade. Well, it, well it's, it's always said all over the world, Primus, that everybody loves a parade and you have a parade passing by marching down the road uh, whether it's rehearsals or any other time any music band and people stop you know there's something about rhythm and particularly over here in the caribbean but just a little um aside here um the music on a parade um usually when soldiers went out to battle back in the day you know they were tired they were battle weary and they needed something to give them a little pep in their step so that's where the band comes in and it rallies the troops and you have certain trumpet calls to attack and to retreat and to move forward and to execute different maneuvers on the battlefield and uh, on the road. And that's what has been taken advantage of all along and it works fine for the officers, the men and the women here who have been standing in the sun for maybe an hour, maybe almost two hours and they need something to keep them a little light. I can recall last year that the, the, the the parade the quite impressive the various um, contingents. Um, here's hoping that this year the same will, will apply. That, that the oh, oh, already they look very spiffy. There. Spiffy. <laughs> well, with all the effort, with all the effort that has gone, all the effort that has gone into preparing those uniforms, those white tunics that the police officers wear, and the other uniforms from the other units. It takes time. If you send it to the laundry, that's fine, but many people iron their own uniforms still. And it does take time to shine those boots. And I remember my days, um, the shining boots, they usually do about one hour on each side. And many people think that's uh, a little crazy, but it gives you an opportunity to contemplate life, you know, that's what I say. sure it does. airport and you can see some of the aircraft landing and taking off. Um, That's correct. Um, we have the parade now standing at ease, which means that uh, somebody will be arriving in a while and there's nothing much going on here. So, you know, like they say, hurry up and wait on the parade. So everybody's here waiting on the dignitaries to arrive and that those will be the Prime Minister the and uh, the Governor General. And um, hopefully by by the time this ceremony is halfway through, the, the sun would be past the capacity. But one of the things we notice here, um, Primus, is that a number of the British officers on parade, they, uh, they have beards. And that's something which is not allowed here in the police force yeah, in St. Lucia. Here as well. uh, that's, that's correct. And um, you see that in Canada as well. But... In the U.S., you hardly find anyone being allowed to wear a beard. But um, I figure someone like you would know a little more about that because in your days in the Australian Army, you did wear a beard, <laughs> didn't you? Very funny, very funny. <laughs> um, I started as a cadet a long time ago. And I was did they let you in? <laughs> Boy, for some reason they did. Um, but I didn't, I didn't remain in there very long. Um, I, I found the training extremely rigorous. You were a rebel. Extremely rigorous. We were trained by the designer and dominator um, Stephen Ford. I said, my goodness, I, I don't think I can take this anymore. <laughs> and so, so I have very little experience in that regard. Well, I'm looking over here to the uh, center of the front half of the parade, and we can see the Marine Police Unit 
decked out in the white, white tunics, tunics and white pants and he looks absolutely sailorish as they say Matlo <laughs> as they say and it's interesting that you mentioned Matlo I think it is perhaps other time to let our Creole viewers have a, an idea of you know what is happening here Mr. Madame Um, uh, look, I continue to serve at Norbert, I think they... they well, look at and look at and say sirens, like a decent um, stretch lock, and so the decent roundabout VG. Like, when I see where the Prime Minister is in the decent la present, and then after the Prime Minister is here, the Governor General is like in the same way. So, look at look at look at the VG, and then the VG is the VG. Et puis, il n'y a pas trop chaud, il n'y a pas trop chaud. Adam, Adam, ça a passé, il y a deux bouteilles de soleil, il y a deux bouteilles de soleil, il y a deux bouteilles de soleil, il y a deux bouteilles de soleil. Et qui s'en passe, il n'y a pas de bouteilles de soleil. Vaseline, Vaseline. Nous avons eu l'arrivée du Prime Minister, il est en train de nous informer, il n'y a pas trop loin de là, nous pouvons entendre des sirens. Il n'y a pas beaucoup de nuages dans le ciel, c'est un parfait jour pour une parade, et c'est aussi un parfait jour for the beach and the beach is not too far away from here. We, we, we have an independent committee and I think really and truly that this recommendation, although it has been made over the years from a number of individuals and organizations, I think it's a recommendation that they should make to the government or to the relevant authorities to reinvigorate, especially that's at this time, the, the that's youth that's organization. The parade has now been brought back to the attention position and, and now we witness the arrival. Escorted to the podium. Parade is uh, under the command of Acting Commissioner of Police George, or ACP George Nicholas. The Prime Minister will take his place at the podium to take the salute.
straight to the Prime Minister, on the back of the shoulder arm, and other arm. Police and he's now being escorted to a seating position in the official seating area. The parade is now put back at the standard ease position and that would signal the that everybody is now waiting for the arrival of the Governor General. And just for a quick rundown here, we have uh, the second in charge of the parade is APP Sylvia Desir, and this, according to the information that I've gotten, will be her last independence parade, and she is due to retire shortly, and she's been a member of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force for something like 32 or 34 years at least. And number one platoon, which is the male police officers, is headed by, or the commander of that unit, is Superintendent of Police Mashama Seal. Next uh, police male platoon is headed by Acting Superintendent of Police Fitzroy Bale. And following that are the women police officers, and the officer in charge there is Air Stewardess Center Daisy Bolor, followed closely by the Special Services Unit, and the officer in charge is Acting Air Chief Elvis Thomas. The parade is now at the put to the stand easy position, a little more relaxed than standard ease. So you can wiggle a little, get your circulation going because it seems like there'll be just a little bit of a wait, so you don't need to be that tense waiting for the next dignitary who is going to arrive, and that person will be the yes, Governor General. Yeah. Very light breeze blowing across the side, and you can hear. And the, the status are beginning to uh, slowly build up. Prime, if you remember when you were a little boy, um, the boom, 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 eh, eh. I understand you used to run after that police band, uh, just like every young boy in the city and around. We could do, we do do that that time. We were so mesmerized by the, the, the parade, the sound, the pulsating rhythm. There's something captivating about the, the, the drum, you know, and its effect, particularly on, on us black people. Natural rhythm. <laughs> Natural rhythm. And we see now the arrival of St. Lucia's Governor General, Sir Emmanuel Neville Platt. He's accompanied by the Commissioner of Police and his aide de camp, Sir Curtis Seal, who was also the drum major. He followed in my footsteps. And the royal standard has now been unfurled as the flag signifying the arrival or the attendance of the Governor General. And um, he will take the down. salute. Ascended the podium.
The parade commander now is marching to the Governor General. He will report the state of the parade, the number of units, uh, men and women, who are here today to celebrate St. Lucia's 41st Independence Anniversary. Reverend, good morning to you, Your Excellency. Welcome to the military parade in observance of our nation's 41st Independence Anniversary celebration. I am Assistant Commissioner of Police George Nicholas, the commanding officer. The parade consists of 15 platoons, all at the open order, ready and awaiting your inspection, sir. I now invite you to inspect the parade. Well, as you heard, the parade commander has now invited the Governor General, Sir Emmanuel Neville Snap, to inspect the parade now at the open order, which means that there's a two pace distance between the ranks. So Primus, as we can see here... How, how does it happen when he... Uh, the, 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 the various um, platoons, um, does he engage them in conversation? Well, it all depends on the, the person taking the parade or inspecting the parade. The Governor General is one who usually engages the troops. And if you notice an exceptional um, uniform or some other aspect of an officer or a person attending the parade, he would make a comment, you know, especially to the young ones. So I am quite certain that the Governor General will make, will stop and make a few comments. And are they to to respond? Well, well, they can. If the Governor General speaks to you, it's expected that you can respond. Nevertheless, I believe that the Governor General will definitely stop at the St. Lucian, visiting St. Lucian British officers who are here to celebrate independence with us. I think it's a, a special... Um, the rehearsal when we were there, it looked a lot more impressive. <laughs> well, 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 today is the ceremonial uniform. You know, everybody looks really spiffy and sharp. That's, that's based on something we should do. <laughs> well, of course, they look very impressive. Yeah. Well, of course, the Governor General is, is wearing or is, is showing off his signature afro, <laughs> his silver afro hair, which is quite uh, uh, his signature. You can tell him anywhere in the crowd. Gouvernement général là qui a passé et puis commissaire police uh, Milton Desi a passé ces ces flags là yeah. et puis après ça il a passé les police maoué et puis après ça c'est police réserve mais ou même pas moi dire c'est primus il doit vous faire parler pour officier marine police le pour un petit moment et qui a passé ces yeah. réserve là et après ça il qui a passé Port Authority Police, St. Lucia Port Authority, ex a cadet la, he ka for boot, front rank, powered la. Governor General um, has now. Oh, that's fantastic! That's fantastic. Well, um, if you're seeing that now, the Governor General has now inspected uh, the first half of the parade, the front half of the parade, the front rank, and is now heading. In rear of the front half of the parade and then he will begin to inspect the second half of the 
gray half of the parade, which starts off with the St. Lucia Fire Service and the British, St. Lucian British soldiers, uh, the EMS personnel, St. John's Ambulance, uh, girl guides. And in the background, you can hear the inspection music by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. As I stated earlier, a little music always helps put a little pep in your step and not make you realize or not let you realize how far you're walking. And he's moving on. And especially to those of you, those of you just joining us here for St. Lucia's 41st anniversary of Independence Military Parade on the Sab, all of you around St. Lucia in the diaspora and around the world who are tuning in, we are at the VG playing field, the Sab. And we're here witnessing today the military parade for St. Lucia's 41st anniversary of independence. As you can see, the, the, the acting commissioner. Well, the governor general is. Uh, Sprightly stepping today. He's almost another member of the parade. They just need to give him a rifle and he'll be fine. So I think I can take this opportunity now quickly and I'll go over it again. But the British, St. Lucian British soldiers, uh, that contingent is headed by WO2 Bovril St. Marie. And the second in command is Color Sergeant Lovell Cadi. And the 21 officers there in the St. Lucians from the British Army have put in time President ranging General from President 4 President to Carrier 20 years. Troops preparing for the march pass at this time. Well, there will be a march pass shortly. Bah! The I band, know. the band right. of troops. Stand up! The parade is put bah! to be at ease position. Band and troop! band will troop now. They will march past the governor general. And when they get to the eastern end of the field near the, the roadway, they will about turn onto themselves. Each rank will do a uh, double right wheel and march in through the approaching ranks and return and they will kick off in slow time slow march and of course a favorite to all St. Lucians Lumine Of course, Primus, you can see over here the drum major taking control of the entire parade and now the march pass with the mace across his chest here. Reminds me of my days as the drum major. I just I think I, you think I was the best guy out there. Of course.
for stalling that that baton or the mace as it's officially called. How long did you play last drum major? I believe it may have been about three or four years. And at that time that the parade was held where? A uh, number of locations, um, if you recall, independence parades have been held here on the south. They've been held at the Mindo Philip Park. They've been held um, in the city on Bridge Street as well. And of course, we've also had independence parades held at VG Airport. I may be a little confused there. I think the arrival of uh, uh, British uh, royalty some time ago had a, a parade there. I think it was at midnight, on, uh, if, uh, if I remember correctly, because I was the drum major. Quite an impressive the, display by the, the police, police band, band well. doing some fancy drill themselves. Yes. band in perfect timing with the music and that's where you see hard training and long training the bass drum is what controls the movement and the double beat on the bass drum and the lead up to the final beat on the drum and the band came to a complete halt No, but the, the drum major would be an instrumentalist as well, would he? Uh, he would be well, not, of well, not, not well, not necessarily you have, but the, the most important factor for a drum major is to have timing. You must have impeccable timing. You must know so the music you know, that's being from played. The, from the members of the police well, band. well, I was not a member of the police band, but because of my cadet background, and ah. I was a master drillsman. Okay. Okay. You, you must have that timing because everything is controlled by the music and the drum major. The drum major is who controls, you may not know what it means, but that mace going up and making different movements up there indicates to the bass and to the bass drummer and to the rest of the band what exactly is coming next and what they need to do. Well, last year we had a contingent of police officers who were doing the fancy drill. But this year it looks like the police band is the, are the ones who are doing the fancy stuff here for us. John Major is performing some fancy footwork at the moment. Well, he's following in my footsteps. I give him a few tips sometimes. Like I say, you got to pep things up, you know? So oh. he's... He's, he's taken that advice. And we can see a smile on the Governor General's face. He's, he's, he likes his action and he, the music is catchy. Yoka Palais. I'm so all St. Lucians know this one. It's very popular.
looks like the drum major in the center of it all is trying to revive himself and uh, with a few taps to the heart and um, looks like he's come alive to the music. But it looks easy primers but twirling that mace takes a lot. And we can hear the reaction of the crowd in the background to the movements of the drum major. Pelvic movement. Expert pelvic movement there. Those are military movements. Military moves. <laughs> it's meant to disorient the enemy whilst you attack. <laughs> It's called subterfuge and deception. Uh, uh, drum major, like a amuse, um, to put this year conversation to a like, go to a um. Go to a good also a movement and sailor. If you don't to a super power, axios are dancing. Perfect timing, perfect timing by the Royal St. Lucia Police Band.
vous et vous 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 Well, pas mal ça. Quand la journée ça là, si on part ça ouais tu as un soleil ça là. Nous on a toi car. Now we have the Royal St. Lucia Police Band back at their original location and um, we're going to come to the end of that performance. He's going to raise that baton, as you will see. He tells them get ready and when he gives that double shake, when it comes down. Look, there you go. Have a look folks, it's going up. There you go. The bass drum reacted immediately to that and he pulled that baton center and front and the music stopped.
you just joining us again. We have the parade commander taking his position, calling the parade to parade the, the attention position. And the armed unit, armed unit, shoulder, shoulder. Oh. Move to the right in threes. Right in threes, right turn, and now the commandant of the color party will give the order for the color party to now change position, right turn, and they will take up their position so that they can march past as well with the rest of the parade. The parade is now facing in the western direction, and they will come around and march past in slow and in quick time. Of course, the parade commander is APC, ACP George Nicholas. The parade will march past in slow and in quick time. You hear that order? At six passes interval, number one detachment leader. Parade! March past! And if you heard that order from the parade commander, that the parade will march past in slow and in quick time at six paces interval which means that each platoon should be six paces from the one in front and the parade the march pass right now is led by the police band and followed by the police detachment charge of the parade here today is ACP George Nicholas. Second in charge is ACP Sylvia Desir, Assistant Commissioner of Police Sylvia Desir. And this will be her last parade after 34, 35 years of service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. She will be going on retirement. The officer in charge of the first platoon is Superintendent of Police Mashama Seely. That is the first platoon, a contingent of male police officers. Second contingent is headed by acting superintendent of police, Fitzroy Bailey, and that is the second contingent of police officers. And following closely behind the male police officers, always a pleasure for the crowds gathered over here, are the women police officers, and they're headed by acting ASP Lecenta Desir Dolor with the FMK-3 submachine guns, 45 degrees across the chest and perfectly lined up there. Absolutely wonderful. And following the women police officers is the special services unit decked out in the camouflage digital greens. And the SSU is headed by ASP Elvis Thomas. Boots shining in the sunshine here at the Saab VG playing field. And following closely behind the special services unit is the color party. And the color party has uh, flagpoles with the flag of St. Lucia, the standard of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, and of the represented contingent and following closely behind the flag party is the marine police unit decked out all in white with the m16 rifles and behind the marine unit is the special reserve police and they're headed by ASP Dudley. And we have uh, 
another contingent which is the St. Lucia Ports Police. And following closely, close behind, we have Bodley Correctional Facility Officers. Following Bodley Correctional Facility are the members of the St. Lucia Cadet Corps with the 303 rifles. Reminds me of my days as a cadet officer. And the officer in charge of the St. Lucia Cadet Corps is Lieutenant Herbert, and the second in command is WO2. Danson Akti. And coming close behind, following the cadets, uh, the St. Lucia Fire Service Officers. Following the fire service is the contingent of St. Lucian British soldiers who have traveled to St. Lucia to commemorate our 41st anniversary of independence. And they are led by WO2 Bovril St. Marie. And the second in command is Color Sergeant Lovell Cadet. And between them, they are varying years of service from four years to 20 years in the British Army. And during their stay here, they arrived a few days ago, they've been involved in a number of community activities. They've met with the Governor General and a number of other government ministers, and they're doing a lot of charitable work here in St. Lucia, commendable for our men who have traveled and returned to oh, It's yes, very commendable, uh, Robert, and it, it is the same that uh, St. Lucia uh, in the British visited here. Um, I can't recall that ever happened, happened before. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a great gesture. So we see St. John's Ambulance, the Girl Guides, and the EMS personnel. And it's, it's always nice to see our young boys and girls taking part in our independence celebrations and being involved in these organizations. And we see the women police officers here now breaking from a slow time into quick time absolutely perfectly right now. And now the parade will break from, the, the approaching platoons will break from slow march as they pass the band, which is now on the airport side, and they will break into quick time and begin the second march past in quick time. the same order as before the two 
male police platoons followed by the women police officers and followed closely by the special services unit and look at these arms swinging there with the women police officers. Special Services Unit in unison as they approach the Governor General for the Eyes Right and they're followed by the Color Party and the Marine Police. And the Marine Police are headed by Nadine George, ASP Nadine George. And the cadet corps, the cadet platoon here now turning and coming up for their turn at the salute to the governor general. White gloves, black pants with a yellow stripe, and the 303 rifles, those things are heavy primus. In charge of the cadets, the commander, Lieutenant Hubert, and second in command, W.O. Danson Acti followed closely by the St. Lucia Fire Service. And coming behind the St. Lucia Fire Service, following is the St. Lucian contingent of British soldiers. The brown uniforms and black shine and shoes. In any parade, the same obtains are in well, what, what do you mean exactly? The format of the parade? Well, you have different countries with different traditions and different, um, you know, changes to suit their own environment. But in general, the whole intention is to have the troops or your personnel on whatever occasion it is, whether it's a graduation or particularly if it's an independence celebration, to march past the governor, the president, the prime minister, to show the manpower what they have available to defend and to deal with law and order in the country. Usually in a, in a training school or police school environment or in the military, this gives the commanders an opportunity to see the effectiveness of the training that the men have received as far as their coordination in their drills, as far as the uniforms and the, the general demeanor of the troops, of the men. So decisions can be made as to whether to inject more funding to have better training or longer training to improve the conditions in the classrooms, in the facilities. So there are, it, 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 it can be viewed from many different so eyes so and okay. perspectives. Well, this year, Primus, it looks like the French didn't make it for our independence parade, but I think a nice substitution um, has been the 21 St. Lucian British servicemen who have made it for our independence.
that that is correct primus and that is quite exemplary and it shows that our solutions still continue to contribute to what's happening in St. Lucia and that St. Lucians in the diaspora are not removed and lost as it may have been possible in the old days with less technology, with less communications, with no social media. It's easier now to get information about what's happening back home, what's happening to our loved ones in other countries and to coordinate efforts such as this. Parade has now, the platoons have now taken up their original positions on the parade square. And they will give the Governor General another salute, and there will be a chair for the government and people um, of St. Lucia. Show as you are. Now the parade will be dressed again, which is where the right marker of the parade. Make sure that everybody's lined up. Make sure that everything is orderly and neat for the salute. And in the background on the VG Beach, we can see the oh army yeah! trees blowing ever so slightly in the breeze. Temperature has gone up just a little bit. Well, actually, yeah. about eight degrees it earlier when we began. It was 74 it's degrees. It's, it's now 82 Bye degrees. Something you need to observe, um, Mother, is that uh, earlier on, a, a flock of um, pigeons, they suppose they were a bit curious. They were moving around, observing. Well, 14 paces to the front, and the entire parade will halt. 14 paces from the original position. Everybody has halted in unison. Royal salute. Now remove headdress for the three chairs. Three chairs to the government and people of St. Lucia as we celebrate our nation's 41st independence anniversary. place headdress and they're given a few seconds to get that in order and everybody will be snapped Red! to attention.
now after quite a number of minutes the governor general will now take his place in the official in his official vehicle the governor general is now accompanied by his wife and they will be proceeding to the governor general's official vehicle the band is also taking position at the head of the parade where they initially started everything off and as the governor general is about to leave if you have a camera on the flag you will notice that the royal standard the flag which signifies the presence of the governor general will now be lowered and we have the prime minister now who will be taken to move to the right in column of roof right prime minister will now be heading to the podium to take the salute and the march past and the governor general now makes his exit in the official vehicle This is Prime Minister Alan Chastney's fourth independence parade, um, his fourth as Prime Minister of St. Lucia. drum major has raised the mace that's a 45 degree across in his raised arm right by the left quick march and the parade commander has given the quick march order <laughs> platoon now under the second in command ACP Sylvia Daisy her final parade independence parade before she goes on retirement after 34 35 years of service in the Royal St. Lucia police force and the platoons are now marching past the Prime Minister and here come the women police the FMK three submachine guns 45 degrees across the chest swinging those arms three abreast followed closely there by the special services unit followed by the color party and the marine police unit closely by the Special Reserve Police, then St. Lucia Ports Police, Bodley Correctional Facility, and they're followed by the platoon of the St. Lucia Cadet Corps. And behind the cadets will be coming up with the second half of the parade, and that is the St. Lucia Fire Service Platoon, the St. Lucian British Soldiers Platoon, Emergency Services Personnel, Girl Guides, St. John's Ambulance, and the Red Cross.
and this will be, will be carried live as well. And ACP Daisy marching fast on her final parade before retirement after 34, 35 years of active service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Live broadcast of the military parade brought to life here at the The ceremony continues uh, as you indicated earlier. Um, the Prime Minister will deliver his um, address at uh, luncheon at the financial center at about 11 a.m. Um, there's also some other activities to take place um, later today. At, um, there's the National Independence Day Parade. At the Vigi roundabout, uh, this is supposed to take place at about 1:30 um, in the PM. Um, and the Prime Minister's ball at the Grand Pavilion at Ridgeway Park. Um, it's been quite an impressive ceremony. Um, but well, absolutely, folks, and um, welcome again to those of you who may be just joining us at the tail end of this broadcast, or who've been with us throughout the morning for this 41st Independence Anniversary Military Parade here at the Sab Playing Field in Castries. We've watched the salutes and the march pass by the varying contingents here today. A uh, special welcome to those of you in the diaspora and around the world who are looking in at what's happening in St. Lucia today for our 41st Anniversary of Independence. As Primus had indicated just a moment ago, we have a number of continuing activities from here at the Financial Center just a few yards away, maybe a hundred yards or so, the Prime Minister will deliver his 41st Independence Anniversary Address to the nation. There will be a luncheon as well. And this afternoon, there will be the Independence March or Parade, parade. of business groups and uh, other uniformed groups and the bikers and the motocross and the cars and everything else here in St. Lucia. A number of floats beauty pageants, uh, contestants, and you name it, everything will be on display this afternoon on the John Compton Highway down past uh, the Sans Souci area. And I recommend you bring the kids so they could have a look at what's happening in St. Lucia and what's happening today for our 41st Independence Anniversary. Okay, Norbert, and so this is where we end our broadcast. Um, we thank you for viewing. We uh, again wish everyone a happy 41st anniversary of independence and we ask you to continue uh, uh, to join the NPM for more live broadcasts yes. of, of, of independence activities. Uh, so, on behalf of the National Television Network and Norbert Williams, we Happy Independence, everyone. Thank you for viewing.